Researchers just recently completed the largest DNA analysis ever done on Viking Age skeletons from burials and other places, and some of the results may surprise you. Uh, thank you for joining me, and welcome to the Milk of Adhumla. The research was done by um, folks at the St. John's College, University of Cambridge, and the Lundbeck Foundation Geogenetics Center at the University of Copenhagen. Um, they looked at whole genomes of 442 mostly Viking age men, women, children, and babies. Uh, they got DNA from teeth and bones. Um, from Viking cemeteries, and they looked at places throughout Europe, uh, Greenland, and, and Great Britain. Now, they found genetic differences between different Viking Age populations within Scandinavia, which kind of suggests that the groups more, were more isolated than was previously thought. And what they really found also is that um, there were a lot of Viking groups, a lot of the skeletons that they analyzed um, kind of changes the idea of Vikings with all blonde hair or red hair and blue eyes because they saw a lot of gene flow from other places and, and genetic um, um, markers that would suggest brown hair and brown eyes. So they saw a major influx of Danish ancestry into England. Um, the Swedes were moving into the Baltic. Um, folks that were coming from Norway were moving into Ireland, Iceland, and Greenland. And then probably the most surprising thing they saw was a substantial um, ancestry from Southern Europe and Asia entering into Scandinavia. And that's where they were getting the markers of, of more brown hair and brown eyes and things like that. So really kind of um, interesting and surprising. You know, the Viking Age has become really popularized, popular, <laughs> has become more popular recently, you know, with the series about Vikings and whatnot. And this image of raiders and, and conquerors has, has really been played up, but I think sometimes um, people forget and what gets downplayed are the immigrants and the trading and the cultural exchange and the, the mixing of populations that was um, occurring. Um, in this slide here, you can see a, a artist's reconstruction of a southern Viking um, with, with brown hair and brown eyes. Now, yeah, these groups, obviously, what it looks like, we're going into different areas and not just raiding, but settling down, um, mixing with the local culture, having families. And so there was a lot of gene flow from Southern Europe and Asia into Scandinavia, from Scandinavia into Southern Europe and Asia. Now, one of the other things, things that they found that points to this mixing of cultures and cultural exchange and settlement is they looked at a grave that was in Orkney um, that was a Viking style grave that had Viking swords and whatnot but the people that were inside it did not have Scandinavian um, DNA they were um, really strongly genetically um, similar to present-day Irish and Scottish people. So these, the two skeletons in here, would have been what are known as Picts. Um, that you can, here's a map of Pictland and an artist's rendering of what the Picts looked like. Um, and this is probably the earliest um, Pict genomes, whole genomes that have um, ever been studied. So not only do you have, you know, uh, DNA being exchanged and genetic heritage being exchanged, but cultural exchange even without genetic mixing, um, which suggests even more long-term settlement, um, blending of cultures. So the authors, this is a quote from one of the papers, they conclude that the Viking DS Diaspora was characterized by substantial trans-regional engagement, 
Distinct populations influence the genetic genomic makeup of different regions of Europe and Scandinavia experienced increased contact with the rest of the continent. Um, I will put links in the description below to the couple of uh, news releases on this paper. Um, the, the paper is not open access, so um, unless you want to pay for it, you can't really get it. But um, there's links um, to where you can uh, read about the study. Now, one of the things I want to kind of finish with is this really puts a wrench into the whole um, Nordic heritage a uh, racist um, paradigm that people have co-opted Odinism and symbology and paganism um, to support racist ideas. Um, especially, I could call out the the group Asatru and their leaders. And this really shows that not only are these people racist and explicitly racist, um, but they also are wrong. Uh, they don't know their history, and um, everything points to that this the Viking Age and the people involved with it were not racists. They were mixing with other cultures, not only genetically having families, but they were sharing culture. Not only were people... Um, um, taking things from Scandinavian culture, but Scandinavia and the Vikings were also taking things from other cultures, and there was cultural sharing and mixing going on. So those of you that are uh, that like to co-opt Od Odinism and Northern paganism and proto-Germanic paganism for your racist ideas, you're wrong, and not only are you racist, but you're also stupid. Um, so I just wanted to make that point. I really thank the people that subscribe to this channel. Subscriptions are slowly growing. My views are growing. Uh, so thank you very much for watching. Please like, please share, please subscribe. And uh, always remember to stay gold.